Hey everyone, welcome back to the Mark Loeffler Experience. Today, again, we're going to be talking about inflation. Inflation, inflation, inflation. And I'm going to delve into why this is important. And, and like some, a lot of the things I'm looking at and why I'm making some of the investment decisions I am and how maybe you can use this for your investment decisions. We're going to be talking about inflation. We're going to be talking about money supply. So I know I've said it here before. I don't think I've ever really showed a graph. Uh, we're going to be comparing our money supply to say something like Venezuela who had runaway inflation for a long time. Let's get into it. Let's just start with that graph right there. So as you can see on the screen, this is the hockey stick that we've all been talking about with money supply. And, you know, there's a steady growth in money supply over 25 years. And then 2020 hits the pandemic and boom, like you can even see in 08, 09, like there's a little bit of a blip, but this is a lot more than a blip. This is a hockey stick. So we've gone from 10 million to 50 million, five times, five times more money supply coming into the market than before. So again, we talk about this, right? So if there's more money, it's going to go somewhere. Some people are saving it. Great. No offense. In this world, savers are going to lose. This is a silent tax. The government has to tax us some way to pay for all the debt and money they've supplied. So one of that ways that is probably beneficial to them, more beneficial is to just inflate the cost of everything. Because, you know, if they do it properly, some may, you might not notice it as much. But if they came out and just said, hey, we're going to tax everybody 5 to 10% more this year and there's nothing you can do about it. Well, people might get angry. So I don't understand why people aren't angry with this. It's not like we can do much right now. Yeah, like, I mean, we got the inflation rate here. I mean, we're getting close to that 4% mark. Last time we saw that was uh, in, you know, the 2011-ish time frame after... Um, after they did increase money supply. But I mean, you can see the difference, right? So you can see the difference um, of that money supply that was printed. So it went up, it had a little blip up and a little blip down. This isn't a blip. This is five times more than at any other point. So we're getting back into the early 2000s territory where we're going to hit over 4%. How do they combat inflation is one of their only tools is to raise interest rates. Well, I mean, here's the thing. If there's inflation and we have real wage growth that is more than inflation, everybody is better off. Now, when we see higher inflation, typically we don't see real wage growth that goes above it. So everybody gets a little poorer every year. Same thing with investments. If you're earning 4% on your investment and inflation is 4%, you're really just status quo. So you really you need to be earning five, six, seven, eight percent. And if you know, we had Quinton on the other day, he thinks we might see 10 to 15 percent real inflation. So you need to be getting that on your investments just to stay even, not to grow, but to stay even. Okay, so ho hopefully I have your attention now. That's what I, I need to see. But let, I, I do actually want to go through that labor. Here's our average hourly year earnings right now. So we did top out. In 2020, we've come down a little bit, um, but we're not like you don't see the spike, right? I'm not seeing the spike here um, in this. I mean, it's coming off a little bit, as you can see it, it uh, July of last year. Now, I think once I mean, people are reopening in Canada, I think um, that's going to tighten up the labor market and then that will lead to more growth. Obviously, with all these shutdowns, we're not in full employment. And we know that the Bank of Canada has already told us that they are not going to raise interest rates until we get into full employment. I think this is just a backhanded thing of them saying, hey, we're going to let inflation run a little bit so we can knock off some of the spending, massive spending that we've done and have it not hurt so much, I guess. But again, you need to be getting a return greater than inflation. I mean, and if you want to retire and you need a 6% return per year, 
and we have four or five percent inflation well now you need to go earn 10 to 11 percent on your investment to be able to grow that money to enough that you can retire on i want to make very clear on this point that's all i want to be very clear this is just the inflation rate up until 2019 you can see obviously in the 1980s uh we are in the 10 11 percent range which you know what will we see that again i, I doubt it um at least not officially um Oh, one of the other things I wanted to do, we've talked about this a fair bit as well, is lumber prices. Uh, lumber prices seem, at least on the wholesale level, seem to be coming back to earth. So that's really good news for somebody like myself or other people who are going to build uh, any properties. You know, it's uh, it's definitely coming back to earth. So I don't know, do we get back down to that, to these levels? But I just wanted to throw that in that it's not going to be as big a factor. Obviously, it's still more expensive than it was, yet it looks like it should come down and we should have some, you know, not so many funny Instagram posts of the one I did was, hey, look, here, here, here's my down payment on my next investment property for like three two by fours. What does that mean and what am I looking to in invest in? So obviously I've invested in Alberta. I think that's a better inflation play than say being in Ontario. Uh, for a couple reasons, it's more of an oil-based economy. I think with reopening, people are gonna fly more, people are gonna go on cruises, uh, people are gonna start traveling again. You know, we're not all gonna be working from home, so therefore more gas will get used. I think that, I think oil prices are gonna go up in the near to long term. So therefore, I'm investing in Alberta. The other reason is, is if there is massive inflation, I don't have to wait very long to be able to raise my rent in Alberta. Whereas in Ontario, you have a, a tenant and, you know, you rent it out. And you know what? I, I don't see the, 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 the Ontario government allowing us to raise rent more than, say, 2%. Even if inflation goes to 6, 7, 8, 10 percent, People are going to be losing money. I'm going to be very interested on when that comes out. I forget when that comes out because I honestly don't own that much here anymore. Well, don't own that much for 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 how much I used to own. You know, I'm I'm going and I'm taking that money. I'm investing in Alberta. And again, I've said it on vi videos before. I'm investing in companies that have products that don't really get hurt by inflation um, or that are they're not price sensitive, so they can pass on the costs of you know their increased production to the consumer. And I do like those types of investments. And again, I'm in Alberta and I, I just, just firmed up on my third property out there. Looking for more, if you know anyone, definitely interested to chat. So one of the things I did want to show was the money supply in Canada compared to the money side in, in Venezuela. You can see, here's a, here's a, what's this, a 10 year chart here. And you can see, okay, here it's, you know, very little, very little. And then Bam, up to 110,000. Now it has come back down to, you know, some reasonable level. But so M2 is like four times. I mean, Venezuela went a heck of a lot. And they had, I mean, if you remember, theirs was 111,000%. You know, the year over year was 1,400% growth year over year. So we're not in that territory yet. They had hyperinflation. So hyperinflation occurs when inflation rate exceeds 50% or more for a period of a month. Okay, I, I don't think we're in that territory. I don't think we're going to get there, but we are going to see more inflation than we have seen since, I guess, like 70s, 80s. Anyways, guys, thanks for following. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for smashing the like button. Comment down below. If you think I'm an idiot, definitely comment down below. If you think I'm the smartest thing since sliced bread, comment down below. Thanks, everyone. See you next time.